Ocean View fifth graders. So today we're going to do some perspective work and you might say, oh, I remember that Ms. Marion, it's really hard, but I think this one will be fun and fairly easy. Um, we're going to do a seascape, which means we're going to do water. And um, the first thing you should know is that you should have your white piece of paper in the up and down vertical position because we'll be able to get the most most um, looking like it has some depth if we have more space up and down. So vertical up and down position for your paper. And here's, here's what we're aiming to do. Something like that today. We're going to have a drawing of some boats on the water. So just as a reminder about perspective, um, there's something called the horizon line. In this picture, the horizon line is right here, underneath the bridge, but on top, it's where it looks like the sky and the water appear to meet. Of course, the sky and the water, we can never say where they actually do meet, but in the distance, there's that line, that's the horizon line. And we're not going to be working too much with the vanishing point today where things look like they disappear, but if we did, it would be right there in the center of the picture. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start out with things in the front, in the foreground. So in this picture, what's in the foreground? Rocks and a path that leads down to the water. They're fairly large. In fact, they're bigger than the boats. They're large because to give our illusion of depth, we wanted to make it look like the rocks are close up, like we're standing right here, and we're really close to these rocks, whereas the boats are farther back, and the boats are bigger than the bridge, which is far away at the horizon line. So things that are close up in the foreground look bigger, and as things go back to the horizon line, they look closer together and smaller. Let's start with the rocks. So have your paper here. I'm going to draw in Sharpie just so you can see it better. But you can draw in pencil to begin. And give yourself some big rock formations that come down on either side. My Sharpie's not doing well. Oh well. One way to make rocks look like they have some depth, let's put some grass here too. Let's put some grass close up. I can end there also. Okay, so if you wanna make your rocks look more like rocks, you have to give them some shading. I'm going, to use, I'm going to use my skinny Sharpie for this because my big Sharpie is not doing well. So if I want to give shading, I can make some lines going in different directions and just do some patches of shading. If I go in one direction with my lines, I can do that. If I come over them again across the other way, that's called cross hatching. It's a good way to make quick shadow lines. And you just want to decide some places to do that. Think about the rock. Where might it be going flat, like you could step on it? And where might it be going up? And make your lines go in those directions. So you'll come along and you'll give yourself some good areas of shadow. Is the, is the rock curved? If so, make your lines curve too, and it'll make it look more rounded. So you can go ahead and give yourself shading in different places, and you would do that on both sides of your rock, like I did here. After you finish that, give yourself a path that leads down to the water. Don't make it a straight path. Get a little bit curved. Okay, that's where it's gonna go down to the water. It's gonna reach a point. Can be skinny here, get wider, 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 wider until it comes up by the rocks. That's my path down to the water, which will start there. 
give yourself some more rocks on either side. These rocks have to get progressively smaller. There's the next size down. Yeah, I can just make two or three more. And make them meet up with the point. Again, we need a big rock there. Smaller and smaller. Put one more there. There, now we've met up. And again, you could give yourself some shading in these rocks to make them look like they have different kinds of surfaces that are rounded or that are more flat, depending on which way you draw your lines, right? Sometimes right next to the rock before it, it would probably be shadow and darker, or maybe near the bottom, more shadow. So you can do that with all of these rocks until you reach the bottom rock. Give them some depth, give them some shading. Okay? So you would do all your rocks like that. When you finish that, you could even give your path a little bit of shadow too. Just a little bit along the edge. Make this path stand out a lot. Make a thicker line next to it. Make it really stand out. Because that's the path you are wanting to take down to the water. Okay, let's go ahead and give ourselves a horizon line now. You're going to need your ruler. And you're going to need to make a straight horizontal line across. So you want to take the edge of your ruler and line it up with the edge of your paper. Come down about an inch and a half. You don't need to measure it. Now, if I come over here and I do this, this is obviously crooked. If I do this, I might be straight or I might not. It's not until I line up the edge with the edge of the paper that I can be sure it's pretty straight. And I hold it down flat with my other hand, hold it tight and make a straight line across. Now I've got a good horizontal line that is my horizon line. The next thing we're going to do is draw two boats in the water. The boats are the hardest part of the drawing. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by making the back parts of our boats. And these back parts are basically horizontal trapezoids. So watch how I do it. I'm going to just with my pencil say, I think I want my first boat to start about there. So I'm going to line up with the edge. And how big do I want my boat to be in the back? Well, not all that big. Maybe. Maybe a little more than an inch. And then I'm going to come down, slide down along the edge of the paper. Just a little ways. This is the back of my boat. I'll make a shorter one underneath, a shorter horizontal line. And by hand, I'll just do that. I've got the back of one boat. Where do I want my boat to go? It's going towards the horizon. So I'm going to put a point somewhere in front of this. That's how long my boat's going to be. So if I go from each of these top points, my trapezoid, to that point, in a triangle, I'm going to have a very, very simple looking boat. It's like I always call this my floating piece of cheese or my floating pie. I'm going to put a dot right in the center of this triangle because I'm going to have a mast that comes straight up from there. So to come straight up and down, I have to line up this edge of my ruler or straight edge with either the top or the bottom of my paper. I'm going to the top. So if I'm up here, I'm not lined up. But if I'm here, I'm lined up with the edge of my paper and I'm coming right through the dot and I can decide how tall I want it to be. Well, that looks about right. I have a straight up and down line. There's going to be two sails on my boat. The first sail is gonna be in the front and the wind's blowing it way out. So I'm going to come to the top of my mast, down to the front tip of my boat, 
and then I'm going to arch back. Now I want to make a back mast. So I'm just going to come from the top of the mast to each back point of my trapezoid, back of my boat. Don't worry, I'll do this one more time for my second boat. So if you ever, oops, I really do not have a good Sharpie here. Um, if you ever wonder again how to do it or you get lost, you can watch while I do it again. So I did that and now I'm just going to make an arch from one corner to the other like that. That's my back mast. And it's not the greatest looking sailboat, but it works pretty well. On these, you can see I, I angled it more so I kind of made a side to it. On this one, it's going so straight ahead, I don't think I could see the side of that boat. So I'm not going to put it on there. Let's make another boat that's smaller because it's closer to the horizon line. So I'm just going to say I want my other boat to be about there. So I'm going to line up the edge of my straight edge with an edge of my paper. If I want to make a horizontal line, I've got to be over here somewhere. This one's going to be a little bit shorter because it's going to be smaller. I'm going to come down a little bit and make it, oops, make it smaller again. And then just like that, that's my horizontal trapezoid. I'm going to put my point up there. I'm just guessing where, how big I want my boat to be. I'm going to go from that point to the top point of my trapezoid and again over here to the other top point. Now I do see more so if I wanted to I could kind of do that. That's the side of my floating cheese. And then give yourself a point in the middle for your mast. Line up this little edge of your ruler with the top or the bottom of your paper. If you want to make an up and down line, you've got to match up on that edge of the paper. Okay, how tall do I want it to be? I'm just guessing. I guess I want it to be about that tall. It's going to be a nice tall mast. Making my front sail billowing out to the front point. The wind's blowing. And arching back that way. Now for my back sail. I'm going to go from the top down to that point and on the top again down to that point. I really wish I had a better sharpie but I don't. And then doing that. Two sailboats are done. That was the hardest part. So the next thing I want to do is make the water. For this part, I like to turn the whole paper upside down. I'll show you why. For the water, I really do want to use a pencil now because you're going to come. I'm going to make my water. Well, let's turn it back again just to show you. This is close up to the viewer. This is the horizon line far away. So here, the waves are going to be bigger. And they're going to get progressively tighter and tighter and tighter and closer, closer, closer together till I can't hardly see the difference back there. Here is a finished one. Bigger waves getting tighter, tighter, tighter till they're really small and close there. Okay, how to do that? Turn the paper upside down. Use your straight edge. Use your pencil. Decide where you want your first wave to be. Somewhere near the rocks. Somewhere near the path. Of course, you don't draw, draw over your rocks. Then come up pretty far because your first wave is going to be really big. I'm lining up here on the edge of my paper. Anywhere I move along that edge of the paper, I know I could stop and make a horizontal line. If I'm over here, I'm not lined up with anything on it's just the table. So I've got to line up with the edge of the paper. Then I know I'm pretty straight. can make another line across. See the big space? This time I'm going to come up. Pretty big space, but not quite as big. Make another line across. 
This time a little closer. I'm coming along this edge. I'm stopping. Still pretty big waves, but a little closer. Don't draw through your boat. And I am going to get tighter and tighter as I move up. Okay, I'm almost up to my second boat already. Let's get a little tighter still. Am I lined up? Yeah, I am. And you can make a couple around the same if you're getting too fast. You can make them kind of the same thickness or distance apart. But as you go towards that horizon line, you are going to get tighter and tighter and closer and closer together with these lines. You see how I'm making them closer and closer now? Eventually, pretty soon here, they're going to be so close together that I'm going to feel like I don't need this straight edge anymore. Which I'm getting to that point really quickly here. Okay, I'll make one more. And then I'm going to take away my straight edge. Let's turn it back around. See what's happening? Okay, as I get up here, it's going to be so close together that I'm just going to do it by hand. And there's a reason you really want to use pencil and not Sharpie here. Of course, you want to go all the way across. It's going to get super tight so that when we get back here, we can barely see. It'll just be kind of lots of lines coming this way. Lots of lines. Okay. Pretty good. Now, you want to come over these lines. When you come over them, you want to make them a little bit wavy because the water moves. You can erase your pencil lines after. This makes it easy to know where to make the waves, doesn't it? Okay, as I get up there, here, let me use this one. I'm really running out of ink with my other one. I need some new Sharpies. And I would come over every single line like that, making it, oops, can you get that? Making it a little bit wavy. I'm having things blowing away here. Okay, so um, I'm not going to finish it, but you would get really tight together back here with your waves, and you'd make them very close and very tight together until it looks more like this. Then, the fun part, up above the horizon line, in the sky, think about it. Back here, if this boat kept going, it would look like a little dot there and disappear. So whatever you draw above this horizon line has to be something really big, like very large hills or mountains, or the sun, maybe a sunset or a sunrise, or I like to draw the Golden Gate Bridge back here something in which I'm going to do by hand because it's kind of easy to draw the bridge. Well, if I'd used my straight edge, I could have drawn a better line there. It looks something like that, right? With all these lines coming down. These are the suspension cables. Okay. Maybe there's some clouds in the sky. Clouds can be any shape. And the good thing about clouds is you can make the shape work for your drawing. 
You could put some birds flying up there in the air. And if you color this in, I recommend that you color it in with colored pencils and do a really good job coloring it. It'll look great. You can come in here, especially if you use a black marker or black Sharpie for your lines first, everything will be nice and crisp and you can go ahead and you can color in your picture and make it look really finished and great at the end. If you don't have a gray colored pencil, you can always use your regular pencil, like for the rocks, and use the edge of it for the shading. If you press more lightly, you can get lighter on the rocks. And if you want to make it more shadowy, you can press a little darker right there. And you can really get some great effects, especially if you've already used the black and kind of made some shadow areas with black. And you can come back with the edge of your pencil like that and get some really great shading going on in your rock areas. Okay, I'm going to let you look at the steps one more time. Let's talk about them. With a pencil, draw some big rocks and maybe some grass on either side of the bottom part of your paper. This is the foreground. It's close up and pretty large because it's close to the viewer. In between your rocks, draw a path that gets closer together as it leads to where you want your water to start. It should come to a point. Fill in on either side of the path with rocks that get progressively smaller as they move back to that point. I am talking about this. Biggest rock, next size, smaller, smallest. Biggest rock, next size, smaller, smaller, smallest. Okay, then draw your horizon line. It should be about a one and a half inches down from the top of the paper. Don't forget that when you're drawing a straight horizon line, you need to match up this little edge of your straight edge with the edge of your paper. After you draw your horizon line, draw your two boats. Start with the trapezoid shape in the back, put a dot, draw lines from the top of your trapezoid to the dot. You've got a floating cheese now, put a dot in the center, make a straight up and down line by taking your little edge and matching up with the top or bottom of your paper and make that mast. Draw your two sails, one in the front and one in the back. Try it again over here. Make one boat. If the boat is closer to the shore, it's got to be bigger. If it's closer this way, it's got to be a little bit smaller. Then turn your paper upside down and draw your horizontal lines getting closer and closer, tighter and tighter as they get to the horizon line. Go over them with wavy lines for water. Draw very big items like hills, mountains, bridges, sun, sunset or sunrise, clouds, maybe some birds up in the sky above. Then color it with colored pencils. And I hope you have a great time doing this. If you want to send me your finished result, you can send it to mernst at ausdk12.org. I'm so glad to do this project with you, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.